Hello chess fans and welcome to today's video. Today's video features a beautiful and instructive little scene miniature from 1998 between the two Dutch stars Jan Timmen and Lok van Veli. This comes from a 10 game match that they played that they eventually split 5-5 five and five when their ratings were within just over 10 points apart. Now Timmen was nearing the end of his competitive career and had achieved enormous things and he was certainly the main man in Dutch chess for the previous decades, whereas Van Veli was rising and it was clear he was going to be the Dutch talent for coming years. The game starts off here with pawn e4 and we get into a Sicilian defense with Timon playing white. Now the game is going to be very, very sharp. We do get a knight off here with an English attack, but we get something fresh very, very soon with h3 and g4. Nowadays, people play h3 and g4 even earlier on as the white players. We get bishop g2, h6, and f4, and queen c7, and castles kingside. Now, this uh, move and the next few moves are maybe a little bit suspect. The computer's not a huge fan. It is certainly risky for white to castle kingside here. Uh, given that white has opened up that side of the board so much. Much more natural is something like queen d2 and castling queenside as you might expect. Still, there's poison in this position. We get an exchange here on d4, and then black strikes with e5. Now, this is going to give black some space in the middle of the board, but it does also open up the f-file, giving white a lot of attacking chances. And because of that, I think the computer and... Uh, analysts would be a little skeptical about this move. After the queen falls back here, we get an exchange on f4. Now, capturing back with the bishop makes a lot of sense, but I think already Timmons anticipating where this game is going, so he does capture back with the rook, and then we get bishop to e6, rook a2, f1, and at this point, I don't know if we can call this an objective mistake from Van Veli, but it's certainly a practical one. Suggested by the computer is instead Bishop c4, trying to disrupt White's coordination here, making the rook move and trying to uh, take the sting out of White's attacking opportunities. Instead, Van Veli, after rook a to f1, decides that there's really no sting in the White position, and so Van Veli just castles right here. So my question to you is what should white play in this position? Well, what Timon did was rook takes f6. Now, presumably Van Veli ruled this out either through concrete calculation or an intuition that after bishop takes f6, uh, you've only given up an exchange and achieved nothing, but here in this position, we're going to sacrifice a second exchange. This attack is a full-on uh, throw everything at the black king kind of attack. After rook takes f6, of course, you must recapture here. White has sacrificed two exchanges, and the question is, how are you going to get back some material? Well, the answer is you're actually not going to get back material. For example, if bishop takes f6 in this position, then black is not going to try to save an exchange. Remember, we're up two of them, so we can let you have one back. Instead, we're going to play king h7 and try to consolidate. There are also other ideas, but there's no way for white to crash through. Instead, Van Veli plays, or Timon plays, the move queen to f2 here, so now he's got stronger ideas. Queen takes f6 is much better than bishop takes h6, and you might still play bishop takes h6 with a mating attack. So after queen to f2, uh, maybe best in this position was a move like queen to e7. After queen e7, then you can see queen h4. There are a number of options for both white and black in this position. And now because of very dangerous ideas here, including pawn to e5, followed by knight to e4, it makes sense to move the rook, giving the king a little bit of space and defending the queen right here. But white maintains a strong attack with a lot of moves. For example, bishop to d4 looks pretty good. A bit slower, but also poisonous is a move like knight e2 when the knight's going to try to work its way around to h5 when it will be a humongous attacking piece. This is a position where although black is up two, count them, two exchanges, you are not happy playing the black position. I think that 
whatever the computer says objectively in this position white is probably at least a little bit better and practically it's very very difficult for black to defend here in any case that became a moot point because after queen f2 we already see a fatal mistake we see the move king to g7 this looks so sensible. The king, of course, wants to be on g7 because we're going to defend h6. We're going to defend f6. We have moves like rook h8. We have moves like queen to e7. I'm going to hold all the weak points. Sure, I'm going to have to be passive, but how are you going to break through against me? Well, this is a perfect point to pause your video and try to figure out how to break through. The winning idea here is pawn to e5 crunch this is such a strong and a beautiful move after pawn to e5 you have some very specific mating ideas but you're also obviously threatening taking on f6 here and you're clearing this square for both the bishop and the knight to have access to it in certain lines this simply leads to a winning attack from black I'll point out that a defensive move like queen to e7 in this position loses simply. The cleanest way that I see is to just take here, and after queen takes, bishop d4 pins and wins. You also have other ideas that play for the attack instead of cashing in the material, but once you see this, you don't really need to dig further. After pawn to e5, uh, Van Vele played the move f takes e5, nothing really better in the position, and another cruncher, bishop takes h6 here, beautiful sacrifice again. Now, you can't take on h6 because if you uh, take on h6 here, king takes h6, then you have queen to h6 check. This is a common idea. There's a famous game where Karyakin had a miniature that featured this kind of sacrifice, but you'll see these bishop h6 sacrifices to work your way in here into the dark squares. Uh, king h7, then bishop e4, and then you can just worm your queen into the h7 square and check mate. Great stuff. In the game, after bishop takes h6, king g6 was played, but then after the only winning move, queen to h4, Van Valley resigned right here. Now, why did black resign? It certainly seems like there could be some defensive tries. Of course, the big threat for white here is simply queen to, h, uh, queen to g5, and then queen to g7 and checkmate. It's already very hard to defend against that. But we also have ideas of queen h5 check. So after, for example, rook to g8, which seems the most sensible, partially because you want to move the rook, because after queen h5 check king back, then you could lose a whole rook in a lot of variations, and this would defend the g7 square. The really strong move here is knight to e4. This comes up in a bunch of the variations besides rook to g8. This move brings the knight in and controls the f6 square. And now there's no good way to defend against queen h5 check because the king can't go this way. It's going to have to go here. And then bishop discoveries are simply lethal. Faced with this uh, crushing set of threats, Van Valley resigned in this position. Now, if you like that game and you want to see more amazing miniatures like it, then you can click over here on the chessboard for some more amazing miniatures. And as always, if you like the content and want me to feel great about creating it, then you can comment and you can uh, subscribe to the channel and you can hit the bell to be notified of future videos.